fine. So, all right, try now. Uh, yeah, hello, can you hear me? Seems okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, so. Um, hello, I'm a high nominator of Fidian Ivor of House Serpents. I, I am here uh, as your representative uh, for the minor houses. Um, I believe we have a representative from each of the minor houses here to discuss and answer the questions that uh, you asked to our, uh, us, your representatives. Um, so uh, I think first off, we just go, go down the line and have everyone here who is from a house uh, just introduce themselves, uh, starting with Lyra. Got him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lyra can't talk right now. My apologies. Uh, Triangulum, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Paraphysic Bradley Cohen. Okay. Uh, Pixis? Uh, the Orator of the Rose, Moot Seeker, Pixis, Taberna Arnu. Mm -hmm. uh, Reticulum? I'm Shinkan Reticulum Pert. Okay. Aquila? Hello, I'm uh, Tribune Aquila Acedia Horatius. Uh, Eridanus? <clears throat> Trivet, Saradon is Klaus Nermillion. Okay. Uh, and uh, Lyra, I believe, does not uh, have a mic at the moment, but uh, Hecate Lyra uh, Ica, the Ga uh, Ica, is the one representing us from Lyra, and when they get their mic set up, they will say hello. Um, at this point in time, the stream is mainly about answering uh, questions uh, uh, that you have asked us uh, about the faction turn process and what you can do to help out. Um, so, the first question that we want to answer today is uh, how does, uh, do us as the council feel about individual house diplomatic efforts and deals in comparison to the Astral Synendrium's diplomatic efforts and deals? And what happens if they become in conflict? And so um, that was asked by Pixis, a uh, specific Pixis reference. You know who you are. Um, and the answer to this at the moment is all the minor houses are encouraged to create IC deals with other houses and factions. Uh, these, contra these contracts can help fuel a very narrative uh, in the Astral Syndrome between its members. Uh, according to the Astral Syndrome Organization Management and Document Security, only the Astral Syndrome holds the power to make an official OOC mechanical agreement with another faction. Uh, should that agreement be brought into an individual, individual house, which includes some mechanical actions, movement on a faction turn, uh, it must be brought before the Astral Syndrome, before it can be considered official. Uh, and um, at this point of time, uh, we're kind of expanding our diplomatic team. It's, getting, it's voted uh, on because of real life consequences and uh, conflicts, not consequences, uh, and time zones. We're trying to get uh, like two council alternatives for each um, house and uh, diplomats representing the house so that everyone's not just relying on each other and the rep. It's very difficult. So uh, yeah, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. where am I at now? <laughs> just something else to add about that. Since it's come up with a couple of the other factions, one of the big concerns with this from individual reps from other factions is that sometimes before this got organized, they reached out to an individual house rep for a mechanical deal and got told, yeah, Reticulum's okay with that or Triangulum's okay with that, but we'll bring it to the rest of the houses. And so then two, two days go by, they bring it to the rest of the houses. The rest of the houses bring it to the council. Another day goes by, the council gets back to the houses. Another day goes by. And all of a sudden, it's taken a week for any action to be taken and for that other faction to even hear back. And so a lot of the motivation for this is to let them not have to try and juggle contacts with seven different people who are of varied, avail varied availabilities and rather kind of get a direct answer of, we'll, we'll talk to you guys or we won't. Just honestly for their sake in a lot of cases. Yeah, helps it helps it make like a, a steady flow of information. Um, I think we have uh, Pert. You have another question that you want to answer? Sure. So, we had a question of: Have there been any consideration of creating a partnership with the Trillant Ring or Acre to perhaps help us with the Vagrant? Would this open up a new opportunity for partnership? This is a question from Akila. Um, the answer to this is: We've reached out to 
pretty much all of the factions in the game to at least kind of see how they feel and get engaged in early discussions with them. Um, obviously, we kind of expect this to continue in the future after this turn. I mean, this is basically our reason for existing as the council. But obviously, as I imagine most of you can understand, we can't really publicly share the details of all those conversations, both because some of that those individual factions have asked us to keep secret because it affects their faction turn and we could be used to kind of metagame them or things like that. But yeah, we have reached out to many other factions and had discussions. Cool, cool. Um, do you want to just go down the list for the questions uh, now if there's nothing else we want uh, specifically want to answer out? Sounds like a plan to me. OK, cool. Um, so question number two, uh, asked by uh, Triangulum. Um, with communications being limited still by the speed of light, uh, is it presumed that there is, at least for unsecured communications, some group of relay stations, planets, that act as a more basic points for long distance transmission, essentially the equivalent of space cell towers? Um, so the, we don't have the authority to answer that. That's like a question for Adam, uh, the Space Master. But, uh, it, or Prism, if they would have control of that. But I believe if you read the Stars of the Number like book, it explains how messages get transferred uh, and stuff like that, just with an easier explanation on that. Not really our area of expertise. If you wanted snake facts or diplomatic stuff, I could help you out. Yeah, yeah I think Adam had said that um, because he wasn't playing with the normal, like, individual groups that would normally be responsible for this, that either a collection of the houses or corporates were taking on those responsibilities, but he didn't specify precisely as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, the next question uh, is, are there any plans in place for the possibil uh, possibility of minor houses splitting from the council? Uh, firm no. <laughs> uh, Adam mainly has the control of if or when a split will happen, and we kind of have to just react to that. So uh, the next question is, uh, do the houses minor think it would be desirable to see an Emperox raised from among them rather than one of the houses major come the end of the year? Um, I think in an, in an OOC and an IC thing, I just that's easy an answer of yes. It, it also probably depends on the house. Um, but yeah, just mechanically, it makes sense uh, in, in like the faction turn side of things. And on top of that, like o OOC, all the houses are gunning for, the, gunning for control. So, totally reasonable to say, yeah. Um, Xavier, I believe you wanted to answer this next question. Uh, actually, we're going to let Kurt has a question to answer first. OK, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so um, next question is, what do we know of the relationship between the 14 Red Dogs triad, uh, the Vagrants, and UPC? Do we suspect some kind of alliance between them? And do we think the Deathless would agree to join them to go against the major houses? I assume also the minor house is given enough compensation. This question is also from Pixis. Um, I think our general feeling is, and Deathless, obviously, I think there was a Deathless guy in the chat, so he could clarify this. But my understanding is Deathless largely is mercenary, so if you pay them enough, they will take your contract. Uh, there are some stipulations to that that may affect that, but at the end of the day, money talks for this sort of thing. Um, realistically, Vagrant by themselves probably don't have enough money to hire the Deathless over some more wealthy factions. But if all three of them, the UPC, the Red Dogs, and Vagrant were to combine, then maybe something could happen. But I don't think right now that's something we're directly worried about. Obviously, in the future, who knows what happens. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, so I think uh, my question's next. It was asked by a House Reticulum member who asked, uh, how do a faction turns work, and where can we see how they are progressing? Um, so the faction turn rules are on the pages in the standard textbook, which you can get for free. Um, they're pages 212 through 225, and uh, Adam will be streaming the faction turns live on his channel. Um, 
and that there is a spreadsheet that includes all of the assets and like the results of each faction turn um, that's being maintained by Adam as well. If you were at, if this individual from House Reticulum was asking about how the House's minor faction turn was coming together, um, each house has the ability to get together, work out amongst yourselves a slate of actions for the council to consider. Um, your representatives will work with you to make sure that you know the slates you put together don't violate anything that we've agreed upon or will give information that's relevant from other discussions we've had. We've run plenty of numbers about different defenses, different attacks, et cetera. Um, and then once your house comes to a final conclusion, however you all decide to do that, that slate can be brought before the council. Um, for this upcoming faction turn one, uh, because we wanted to do the stream on a weekend, not during the middle of the week, uh, we'll be holding our discussions and conversations between the representatives um, asynchronously, just over over a certain amount of time for the votes to occur. Um, and that's all of those deadlines for houses minor people are posted in our faction turn planning channel. Um, you can find them in the pins. So. I think Pert, that brings us to another question that you are answering. Uh, yeah. So this question was from an Aquila member. It says, what are our long-term strategies and goals after we overcome our immediate threats? We're going to focus on our own economy, bleeding other factions of credits, or units of special attacks, or something completely different. Uh, ultimately, we got to realize that the faction turn is something that happens once a month real time. That means we're probably going to have three to four shows that are four hours long in between those. And ultimately, if you remember back in Swan Song or have played a Star Wars Numbers campaign before, uh, rather drastic things can happen in the show that have ramifications in the faction turn, such as orbital bombardments, uh, crazy artificial intelligences getting their own fleet you know like things happen and so based that combined with the kind of swinginess of roles means that despite our best laid plans in three turns the situation could be any number of things and so i think ultimately mostly our plans are kind of short-term focused we'll see how they go and Really, once the conflict with Vagrant is resolved, however long that takes, whatever the resolution looks like, we'll probably have a more pressing matter that's kind of ready and available to us as soon as that happens. Yeah. I yeah, and I don't think this is the kind of thing where we will uh, we will march out, kill the Vagrant, and then be sitting around waiting for something to happen. Yeah, it's also important to remember that, like, there's no quote unquote winning uh, the game of the faction turn. I mean, like, yeah, we'll, we'll crush our enemies and hear the lamentations of their women, but there, there's no way for us to just be like, yeah, we won. It, it's, it's about making a background and having a cool setting. And ultimately, yes, we want the minor houses to be on top of that cool setting, but we got to see what we see the cards were dealt. Yeah, I mean, we have lots of advantages given our stats and our assets, but we could just roll really badly. Yeah, and things could go downhill, you know, like these things can happen. And so we'll see where we are in three months and three months, pretty much. Yep. Um, the next question we have uh, is, uh, what is the general view on protecting uh, Mori and uh, Tiber, who are currently under threat from the Vagrant? Um, uh, the simple answer is uh, the Astral uh, Synendrum. Am I getting that right now? Just, I'll get it right eventually. I thought it was Synedrium. But uh, isn't, it, yeah. isn't it sin yeah, it's Synedrium? This Machiavellian plans are just destroying me. Uh, <laughs> we wish to defend all members of the House as Minor to the best of our ability. Um, we believe that Lodestone and Lovelace present a more credible threat to the Vagrant issue. Uh, all planets in range are des uh, designed to be defended in the currently discussed proposals. Uh, faction turns with leave any planet without at least a single unit for defense could be harder to sell to the entire uh, uh, Synendrium. Yep, yep. We're just going to have to change that. I, I overruled. <laughs> it's okay. You, you won't have to say it after next month, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it'll be um, uh, next month. It'll actually be a triangular member who's responsible for saying the full name, so no worries not about it. Not it. Not, not it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, we can uh, just call yeah. ourselves the ass. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, AS has become the accepted acronym abbreviation. Nice. Okay, uh, Xavier, I think you're next on this question. Yeah, so we have a question from a House Library member who asked, how many positions do you think the council needs and how often will there be elections to the council? Um, so the first answer to that is the council has seven voting positions. They are the individuals who introduce themselves at the beginning of the stream. Um, the elections for those positions are very dependent on your house because each house was allowed to set it up independently. Um, so I asked in Lyra, um, and I was told that you all will be holding a vote about ap around every faction turn um, and that you know, you'd be able to put your name in if you were interested in running and that people would explain why they think they should be elected, et cetera. Um, a, the council accepts a couple alternates to this position, to this voting position, because um, that allows for some increased availability, like we discussed earlier. Um, obviously, not everyone can be available at the time we try to schedule a stream. That's proven to be an almost impossible task until we just pick a time. Um, the other thing we discussed is we are considering a rework of our diplomatic um, powers, which would expand the number of individuals who would be a part of the council in a non-voting fashion um, by allowing them to appoint two diplomats um, to help us out in mechanical negotiations. Um, and again, houses get complete control over how they appoint people to that position. Um, so I would recommend for this house line, remember that you reach out to those in your house and they might be able to get you a more specific answer. Yeah, ultimately, the way to get involved individually is always going to be through your house rather than kind of directly interacting with the council. Yeah. Talk to your rep, talk to the other people in your houses, be like, hey, I have ideas. Be, be polite with those ideas and we'll be happy to listen to them. That's why you put us in this position anyway. And even if you're not active in your houses yet, like, don't be afraid to ask to be like, to have someone help catch you up to speed on how the faction turn works, what sorts of things people have been talking about so far so that you can contribute. Yeah, yeah. We want to hear as many voices as we can. It's just, it's getting difficult. It, it's very difficult to be like, hey, what, what's going on here? I have ideas. I want to be loud about those ideas. <laughs> like, and we, we're super happy to hear them, but we want to make sure that it's done once and understood. Um, okay. Uh, I think um, nobody, uh, we got the next question, uh, which is, uh, with all the houses looking to advance their own diverse interests, how the Sanendrum, damn it, uh, choose which actions to take? Uh, will each house have an equal vote, or each house have a different weight in the final decision? Um, every house has an equal vote on the faction turn decisions. That, that's just it. Everybody gets one, you get to choose what it is, and that's how it goes. Uh, there's a, um, I believe Xavier has a document that's in the Minor House Faction Turn Planning Channel. Uh, that will have um, the explanation on how voting is decided, if I am uh, understanding this correctly. Yep. It's cool. the document that was voted on at our second Congress of 100 plus people um, that was written by uh, Lady Synchronous Hyperbilis, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, it's just the standard procedures that we've been using. Yeah, every house gets one vote. Yep. Cool. Um, uh, Pert, I believe you were answering this one next. And if anybody else wants to say a question that's not me, uh, feel free. <laughs> yeah. So the vagrants seem pretty exposed, and since we have the blood of the enemy goal, it seems like a fairly obvious target. Do we intend to attack? Uh, this is another question from Lyra. The short version is, yes, that is something we're considering. The long version is, it's basically, vagrant has put their units basically as close to us as they can. It's pretty clear what their intention is. And so ultimately, our conflict with them is probably going to be the primary action in the sector, and certainly the primary action we're involved with in for the foreseeable future. But obviously, given the fact that this is publicly streamed, we're not really going to go into the exact details of how we plan on addressing, addressing the vagrant threat. Mm -hmm. And we'll kind of have to, as I mentioned before, we'll see with that randomness, we'll, we'll see what happens either both on the show and in the faction turns and kind of 
It may be that we never be offensive. It may be that we're only offensive. It may be somewhere in between. We don't know yet. I, I, I laugh the fact that uh, the next question I signed up to answer after previously saying, hey, every, someone else answered a question. But uh, this is a question that mainly because I'm the rep, uh, it, it's important. Uh, the question is, are we allowed to make a choice as a house to add a research-based space station with pre-chosen occupations and situations to our planet's orbit for flavor? Um, more of a question for Adam. Uh, you, you are correct, um, House Lyra uh, person asking this question. That's more of a question for Adam. Uh, you can ask him yourself, but he specifically wanted um, any like questions that uh, th about like houses and stuff to go through the representative, so he can all find it in one place. Uh, if you ever have something that you want to like ask that's lore wise, I'm happy to get pass that message along to Adam. Um, remember that like put it on the wiki, and like if there's ever a problem, it's mostly your house to decide. But if it's like Simple stuff like, hey, is it cool if we have a Taco Bell on this planet? Like, yeah, probably. I mean, that's probably something you'll have to ask Acre. I know they have that Pizza Hut one. What's the the Pizza Ziggurat? Ziggurat, Hut, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, Where, where's Space Taco cheese. Bell? <laughs> Come on, Acre, get on that. I know there are some Acre representatives in the in the chat, so maybe yeah. they'll get a response back to us here. Yeah, I, I, I expect I expect Taco Bell on my desk tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the, the biggest answer to this question is, for the most part, Adam had told us that we're allowed to sort of make up lore. So if you want to make something that's in your space, that's fine. Um, but keeping in mind that those research bases are actually things that exist on the map. So if you are going to suggest adding something to the map, I would cons you know, recommend you don't do that without reaching out to him first, since those are things that are you know, specific to the sector map. And I would add that you can just put stuff up in orbit without it being a thing on the map, and Adam might still mm -hmm. use it. Um, yeah. Because he suggested early on, Triagulum, you probably live in orbit. Do that if you want. And we can't use the research bases that we have on the map for that, so we just made an extra one. It's not a research base. It's not the same kind of asset that you would see on the Stars Without Numbers sector map, but it's on the wiki. It's a thing that's, that exists. He'll probably use it. There's probably room for you to do that as long as your house likes your idea. Yeah. Also, uh, reminded by my resident serpents who is yelling at me every time the wiki ever gets said, uh, make sure you add the stuff to the wiki. If you're ever like, reach out. Everyone should have one. Reach out to a person who has the wiki and add it, because that's the thing that'll be easier to parse through. Yeah, and if you ever say, does this seem cool? Should I put it on the wiki? The answer is yes. Yeah. As long as it's not like, I'm, I'm the dark lord of blowing up planets, and I walk on planets to blow them up. Like, you know, if it's reasonable and it's cool new shit, then totally, we want to see it. If you're not just a, like, randomly teleporting juggernaut assassin crazy engineer man, then it probably belongs in the wiki. So, does that mean if walking on planets and blowing them up is a no-go, does that mean this so-called moon gun initiative is not Well, you see, a moon is not a planet, it's an orbital body. Uh, anyway... I would argue it's more ammunition. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we did get a response from an anchor member in the stream chat um, that apparently Taco Bell did not win the, um, uh, where was it, the like franchise wars, but they will be sure to expand their selection of um, uh, tacos and taco related menu items. I I'm just saying, there seems to be some implicit bias, and uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Pert, I think you have the next question. Yeah. So, uh, have we confirmed the torn order of the Deathless? If not, how do we plan to? This is a question from Iridanus. Uh So, for those of you, I think the best way to answer this is with a quote from a certain movie called Shrek the Third. For those of you who remember this movie, there is a somewhat memorable scene involving Pinocchio and attempting to not lie. I'm not even going to try and rattle off the gibberish that he spouts but uh i can neither confirm nor deny that we have attempted or not attempted to confirm the deathless's turn order and even if we had that would be something that would almost certainly be private and the deathless would not want to share us to share it publicly so obviously i'm not going to 
share it or not share it publicly. Um, if you if you really want a firm answer, you can probably reach out to your rep, and if we have any information on it, then they might be able to give you some broad strokes. But obviously, your mileage may vary based on the exact information you want and whether or not we have it. Mm -hmm. And yes, this astral synedrium does have layers like a cake or a parfait, but not an onion, because onions are gross. I, I, I disagree with my reticulum rep. I enjoy onions. Are you going to tell me that you'd rather have a parfait, an onion, than a parfait? Like baked into something? Like in a meatloaf? Yeah, I'd rather have onions than a parfait. I don't want a parfait meatloaf. You're disgusting. I mean, but... You just take the meatloaf and then eat the parfait. Like, fuck the meatloaf. It's parfait, dude. It's but, great. dude, I can't have parfait all the time. I got a girlish figure to watch. Back on topic. Back on topic. I don't know. This was funny. I was letting okay. it go. Um, that, I do believe, results in the conclusion of all of the questions we had collected there originally. I think See, there's one more. On it's a it's a pretty simple one. I'll read it real quick. Oh, uh, what do we consider to be the most efficient way to deal with stealth units, mainly from Vagrant? Asks a Triangulum. Um, I mean, first of all, we expect them to unstealth their units, and so we'll be able to get them then. If they don't, we'll get an asset that does that. There are a few in the book that do. If you want to talk about which ones might be a good idea, message your rep. Uh, get involved in, in the uh, tactical planning. Mm -hmm. That's... Remember, like the only stealth assets Vagrant has are psychic assassins, and psychic assassins don't do a whole lot sitting there and doing nothing. So <laughs> uh, they're not great defensively, as you might imagine, given their four HP and no counterattack. So we expect, and I assume they expect, that they will be doing something pretty quick. Vagrant thinks they're being clever with their very, very not hidden gun, but we know where it's pointed and. Uh expect to be shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's about the most important thing that those of us on the council, um, all of the voting representatives and all of us who have either volunteered or are alternates um, is get involved, um, ask questions. We're never afraid to answer questions. You may not always like our answers to the questions, but we will do our best to answer them. Um, we'll be working on ways for people to get more involved in the future. We understand that this first turn has been a little bit chaotic for several people, and to be entirely honest, it's been very chaotic for us. Um, the whole diplomacy thing totally came out of what we just ended up needing to result to do because we discovered that trying to go through individual houses wasn't very effective. Um, information was getting lost, and it wasn't always making it to everyone. Um, there will be, of course, after um, any vote that we do on the asset selection, which is not occurring today, um, it occurs later in this week, um, that there will be another results document posted for the House's Minor so that everybody knows what was going on. Um, the, I th Do we have anything else we need to cover? Should we cover the due dates for the House's Minor people on stream? There was a, a, a point of order brought up in chat uh, that I need Pert to answer. Uh, an onion is... is an onion, no matter how you slice it. I, but, I mean, come on. <laughs> Have you ever had onion straw or onion hay? Onion strings? They're really good. Onion strings are okay. Right. French fried onions are delicious, mostly right. because they're like fake onions. Listen, I don't know how serpents and reticulum can get over this barrier, but I'm trying very hard. <laughs> but we have, we have an amendment process for a reason. Um, I think we should set up something. Parfaits are the sure. official fruit dessert of House Reticulum. Oh End of comment. So I'm, I'm not writing this document, but anybody else, feel free to write the document resulting in what the um, Astral Synedrium actually is with layers. Are we an onion? Are we a cake? Are we a parfait? Um, who knows? Somebody, somebody propose it and we'll figure it out. It might be a jawbreaker. It could be a lasagna. Or a racquetball. No, I'm down with lasagna. I'm, I'm, my vote is on that. Oh boy. Maybe we're a seven layer dip, you know? <laughs> Where do we end up with on stream resulting into what the Astral Synedrium is? Um, hey, we're staying on brand. <laughs> the Astral Synedrium. Chicago wow. style. Wow. I think you'll find it's pronounced uh, no, 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 no. in Dedrium. Um... Oh boy. 
Okay. okay. So just real so, quick, um, back on topic, uh, just something to reinforce. For all the people who think that this turn has been a shit show and kind of gone like crazy, you're right. Um, but ultimately, the assets, initial asset stream was what, May 11th? Yeah. And we have to have everything submitted by May 26th. That is 15 days for us to figure out where assets are in this sector, respond, and figure out what the fuck we're doing. So that's 15 days, whereas normally we would have a lot less work to do with a lot less pre, lot more pre-existing information, and we'll have a month in the future. So I don't think anyone expects this the way this turn went and is going to be the norm in the future. Things will calm down a lot after the first turn. That is most certainly the hope. Um, I, I much appreciate the uh, idea of a layered algae protein simulated onion, but just not to derail us again. Anyway, um, I, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and read out some of the important deadlines for the houses minor folks, um, just so that everybody knows this information. Um, uh, first off, um, obviously we had our stream today. That's what we're still in the middle of. Um, on the uh, 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 12 a.m. Universal Coordinated Time on May the 23rd, um, houses should turn in their proposals for slates. So you've got uh, just over 48 hours um, to figure out what your house wants to propose. Um, they will be posted publicly at that time um, so that all houses can see them. Okay, by publicly, I do not mean posted publicly for everybody to see them. It will be houses minor um, folks who are able to see them. And then the council will get together and vote asynchronously over 24 hours. Um, and then once that vote closes, we'll compile the results. The speaker, um, our resident serpents of high nominator, um, Ivor, will send it off to Adam. And then once the lock-in deadline has passed, uh, we'll release a document signed by all the members of the council that include uh, what the results were, how we got to the results, and all of that sort of explanation. Um, does, does anybody here think I have missed something? Uh, no. I believe we've been remiss in our discussion of baklava as a delicious layered food. Ooh, I, I can agree with that. I'm down. I could, I could talk about things made yeah. of phibo for like an hour and a half. Do not get me started. I, I mean... I don't think so. Um, so does anybody else here have something else that they think we need to discuss as a matter of the council um, before we pretty much, I guess, wrap up? Uh, thank you everyone who's making crazy awesome content and like cool art and uh, uh, the wiki, like shout out to everyone who's doing that. Uh, Reticulum is not the best house I saw you, ha <laughs> ha. I believe I have mute power in this channel, don't I? <laughs> um, technically, I think you do. Silence the heretic. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess with that, if no other representative has anything else, um, the August and Beneficient Synindrium Astral of the Beloved Lord's Temporal and Eternal of the Sacred High House's Imperial, Servants of the Most Serene Celestial Emperor, Long May They Reign, Shepherds of Acheron or of Sacred, and the Guardian of the Righteous uh, will be signing off of our stream today. There we go. I made the full name. Make it into the Hashtag stream. Hashtag show off. And Wait. I didn't screw it up this time. I'm impressed. Hashtag Emperor, Emperor Andy. Yeah. Damn. Emperor. Yeah, I, I gotta work on my eloquence. All right. Well, I guess with that, we will uh, start signing off here, guys. Say bye. Yeah. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, space friends. Well, thank you for listening.